Okay, my friends, this is going to be fun. I was um, posting on this page, and I was amazed. They let me post. They have 1.7 million members. This is Google Earth Structures and Anomalies, which is my favorite subject. So uh, they let me post. and um, But then I think I got in trouble. <laughs> I posted this. What do you think caused these formations of Vermilion Cliffs? And there's, you know, everybody started attacking me. So, you know, I'm crazy. Da, 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 da. So I started putting other things like this is a breast. Now, let me see if I can still post here. I think I got knocked off of here because I, I started to, you know, show the other things at Vermilion Cliffs. And I'm, that's what I was going to do right now is the Vermilion Cliff thing. And I went up here to see if I'm still allowed. And I think I might be blocked. Look at this. These are all people that laughed. <laughs> this, this is a bunch of idiots up here. I got one person who loved it. These people liked it. And all these people laughed. Now, so let's see. I just put this in. I said, I know this is shocking, but if you stop and think, then read the ancient texts, what will you find? Well, let's see if they let me post that. Wow, I was able to post it. This is amazing. <laughs> Maybe they didn't bump me off. I thought I was bumped. Very cool. So anyway, let's get into Vermilion Cliffs. No, here's, here's the one I, I was bumped from. Fraudulent Archaeology Wall of Shame. <laughs> and um, she's attacking me, this woman is here. I have a live one for you. He's an idiot at all for your amusement. And they just attacked me with all kinds of stuff. So I came up here to try to defend myself, and I, I can't defend myself. It's pending. They won't let me speak. I want to show my stuff. So this is the one I'm blocked from, Fraudulent Archaeology Wall of Shame. I have four comments are pending because they won't let me speak. That's the kind of stuff I get. The other one was really good. I'm st still kind of amazed, to be perfectly honest with you. All right, so anyway, I, I'm going to go into the Vermilion Cliffs, and people just can't, their minds are just so locked up, it's just incredible. I go to these places, there's hundreds of thousands of people there, and literally every one of them attacks me. It, it, every now and then I'll find somebody that's from mud fossils, has had investigated it, and, and there's no attack. But there's, you know, like I'll get one or two to support me, tops, out of 500 against me. It's, it's, it's a crowd effort <laughs> to suppress this stuff. Once they get their buddies and they're all together, they're, let's go, oh, that guy's an idiot, oh, he's a bigger idiot, oh, he's a crazy idiot, he's a fool, and it goes on and on and on. So, but anyway, this, this is biology. I know it's off the charts crazy, but this is for a million cliffs. I posted in there and they went absolutely off the wall. And this is this is stomach tissue and, and guts and even 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 a woman's breasts. You want to see that here? <laughs> you see this? I'm, pay close attention to this. This is what the breast is. The sternum is here, and these are the breast tissues that are completely different than muscle tissue. So let's see if we can find some of those. Well, guess what? <laughs> There's a pair right there. And this is what your muscle banding is in connective tissue. It's just like that. And this, this is uh, this is breast tissue, and that is the sternum right up the middle. And it's all over the place. It's not just this one little spot. It's everywhere. There's, there was biology of creatures everywhere, and they died in mass, and then they were eroded just like this. And it had to have something to do with the water, the different chemistry that was in the water, the time that it flowed, how soon it was, how hot it was, all of that stuff. And then it dried out into these layered tissues. I know it's really hard to believe, but it's true. These layers right here are where the connective tissue comes up. It's an abrupt transition. And these are connective tissues and layers and waves of muscles. Those are not erosion. All right, this is somewhere out west, too. This is the guy's van. 
and this is muscle tissue. All of the, these things are the connective tissues. The red stuff, you see this here? That's the, that's the sarcomere stuff that pulls in and out the connective tissue to make your muscles work. And this is just eroded red fleshy stuff. Again, that's in between the muscle sarcomeres and they make them contract. All right, you see this? This is tendon. And these are the tendon fibers and they come in these patterns. Sometimes they're very regular, sometimes they're a little askew. It depends on how it died. This is a little bit of blood and they didn't need much. They had the very, very little blood, but they did need some to service these, these tendon fibers. All right, let's just continue on here. This is all different muscle. I showed you the breasts, and this is what the anatomical looks like. That's ten uh, muscles, and it's just eroded a little bit. This is what the actual fibers sort of look like in the different areas. Skeletal muscle is the one I primarily see, but then you can see these kind of tissues that are from smooth muscle tissues and your cardiac muscle and so forth. I've seen all of those. I, I know exactly what they are. And here's, here's skeletal muscle in a stone. These are the sarcomeres, and this is the blood. It's heavily infused with blood, and this is the skin up at the top. And then you come down to the muscles on below, and this is all the blood that services all of that muscle tissue, which is these sarcomeres. Now, some of them will erode, well, in areas they erode right down here and right down the center. And it leaves them like this, and you have a zillion little little slabs, which are the connective tissue, because these pull in together. And here's what they look like anatomically. This is exactly what they look like, because this is a slide. And they, they pull together like this and end up being like that. They have red gooey stuff, and then they have a complete layer of connective tissue. And these slide right in together like this, to pull your muscles together. They're called sarcomeres. So here, these are the same thing. These are sarcomeres. They are tiny. But when they all pull together, you get a pretty good, pretty good muscle out of it. All right, I think I might have showed you this already, but this is tendon. It's different than muscle. Muscle has those other different orientations to it. Tendons have almost no blood. There's very little blood. There's some right here, but very little in, in general. Muscles are infused with blood, and they're, they're a different look to them than this. These are fibers running straight down side by side, and they have to be able to move and so forth. That's why they have these membranes. They can move against each other just a little bit so that they can be flexible. All right, that would lead down to some anchor and have a bunch of balls at the other end of these tendons, and that's how they lock in, and then they go to muscles. Here's what they look like. These little tendon fibers run down into these balls, and the balls anchor somewhere, either in tissue or in bones. And then the tendon pulls just a little bit, but all of these are straps, and they come running back from the tendons. And... And they, here is one that's cut right off. Now you can see a tendon comes out of these through bu to several bundles, and then the bundles break down into little tiny pieces inside, and then those tiny pieces break down to tinier ones, tinier ones, tinier ones, until you get down to the tiniest little, and with a ball on the end, and that's what locks it in. And then all of those fibers move and, and it, so that they can do all this kind of stuff and you can move around. And they're tough, tough, tough. They hardly pull at all. And then that attaches to a muscle. The muscle does all that. This just gives enough give so that it doesn't rip out of the bone. All right, here's an autopsy right here of the tendon, the muscle, and the bone. All right, so the, here's the bone. You see that round circle? Well, that is right up here. I don't, didn't have it in this picture, but this right here is the tendon. This is brown. Then you go into the pink stuff is the muscle, and that's right here. I have a better shot of this in a second. I'll show you that. But this shows it with the bone. So remember, this is where the bone is. And you see that ball right there? That's this ball right here. 
right? This ball right here is that ball right there. And then this tendon runs over to the muscle. This tendon runs over to this muscle. This muscle is fed with red blood. Now let's see if I, I think I have a better shot here. All right, now here it is right here. This is the muscle. This ball here, you see this ball? That's the tendon in the center which locked it to that bone I showed you before. You see it's brown, there's no muscle, there's no blood here. You don't need blood, you don't need blood. Here you need blood, because here you got your muscle. But here it's just tendon, it's just almost like a rubber band. This is what I really want you to focus on, is this circle and this central strap, the central strap right here going to this circle. And that circle embeds into that bone, which I just showed you a moment ago. That's the circle right there. It embeds basically into the bone. It, it, there's some kind of a structure that locks it into this bone. I haven't really figured that out, but I do know that this locks this tendon right here into that bone. So it can do the little of this and a little of that, but it's not going to rip out of here, and it's just going to do a little bit. And then that connects up to the muscle, and the muscle is where you have all the red. There's no, there's no, no blood in that at all. There's no blood at all in there. I mean, I'm going to say no, not at all. There's just hardly any. Like the big, well, right here I showed you a second ago. Oh, there was one little tiny spot. You see up here? And that's actually, I think, probably running along the skin line. And you just got a taste running in here, every here and there. Because this, uh, this is the outside layer of flesh or whatever wrapped around this tendon. That's where the blood is coming from. That's, the tendons have just almost no blood whatsoever. All right, this is why I said focus on the ball. That little round circle there and this main stalk of the tendon. The, the bone would have been over here and the muscle would have been here. And they just eroded away. That's why this is sticking up in the ocean. It's as tough as tough gets because this is nothing but tendon. And they say millions of years in one picture. No, that's the body of a creature which died and I don't know how long it took it all to erode away, but it didn't take that long. Certainly not millions of years. This was a hot boiling flood. Heavy silicates, boiling waters, and they, all, the, all the ancient texts say that. The Colburn Bible says that. All the ancient texts, Velikovsky did all the research on it and he said the same thing. We almost got hit by a fiery comet, which ended up being Venus, and it created all this, this havoc. And the people watched it happen. They actually watched it and recorded it. So, and it was recorded on every, every culture in the world. They all had the same story. So they weren't all just lying about it. They had the same story. They could actually see it happening. It took seven days for the comet to, to almost hit Earth, and then it was all over from there. All right. Mother Shipton is supposed to be a pro prophet and supposed to be saying things that will come in the future. I say no. She's saying things that have happened. Now, they may come again because they say history repeats itself. And I mean it may repeat itself almost exactly step for step. I don't know. But I do know the things that she talked about did happen and they happened a while ago, and Velikovsky wrote almost word for word what she says. Now she wrote in 1500s, somewhere around there, um, 1488, all right, it's somewhere in that area. And he wrote in the 20th century, 19 something, uh, 1950 was his book, Worlds in Collision. But he got he he sourced every single culture on earth now i don't think she had the ability to do that but she seemed to have the same story he had now where she got it from je ne sais pas i do not know but we're going to go through her cave and how the things petrify there and she's she's got a poem that's absolutely phenomenal it's very long so i'm going to be reading it in the next video and we're going to be going through her actual the cave right here where they hang things and it all petrifies as the water runs off and um we're going to be looking at at um the whole, the whole thing. Look at this coming from the top, all running off. I think I know what it is.
to some degree. Uh, and we'll be talking about that shortly. All right, thank you. I love you all. Goodbye.